Now, I would like to explore some of the meaning of Revelation 12, verse 12, which states, Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you full of fury, because he knows his time is short. From here we can establish that the devil is on this earth, because the Bible says woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you. From this verse we can also establish that the devil is angry. In fact, the Bible says that Satan is full of fury because his time is short. And if his time is short, it means that the return of Jesus Christ is closer. In fact, if you take the time to really study and understand what Revelation 12 verse 12 is saying, you will understand the reason why sin and evil are so abundant in our world. Now, the book of Revelation is full of visions. This verse is no exception. It tells of a great war in heaven, where the dragon, also known as the devil, and his angels fought against Michael and his angels. Satan and his followers have been defeated and cast down to earth, where they are filled with fury and seek to cause destruction. The illustration I want to use to explain this passage is that of a caged lion. Imagine a lion in a zoo, pacing back and forth in its cage. The lion is powerful and dangerous, but he is confined to a small space. The bars of the cage prevent the lion from harming those outside. Now imagine that the cage door is suddenly opened and the lion is released. The lion, full of fury, runs rampant, attacking everything in its path. This is similar to what is happening with Satan. He was once confined to the spiritual realm, but was released to roam the earth. He is full of fury and seeks to attack and destroy everything in his path. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be sober and watchful. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But why is Satan so determined to cause destruction? The answer lies in your rebellion against God. Satan was an angel of God, but he rebelled and was cast out of heaven. Since then he has waged war against God and his people, seeking to lead as many souls as possible away from the truth. This is why sin and evil are so abundant in this world. Satan is actively working to lead people into temptation and sin, hoping to turn them away from God and lead them to eternal damnation. But we should not fear, because Jesus has already defeated Satan on the cross. In conclusion, Revelation 12 verse 12 reminds us that sin and evil abound in this world because of Satan's rebellion against God. As Christians, we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus has already won the victory over Satan, and through him, we have the power to resist temptation and overcome evil. Let us place our faith in Jesus and stand firm against the wiles of the devil, knowing that our eternal reward is secure in Christ. You and I as believers need to make sure that our focus is only on Jesus Christ. We must focus on him who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ, who explicitly said, No one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need to make sure that we are not found among the people mentioned in Matthew 7 verse 22, where the Bible says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we did not prophesy in your name. In your name we did not cast out demons, and we don't perform many miracles. The wise among us will be vigilant. They will see the signs of the times because they study the word of God. But fools will fall asleep. They will miss the signs due to lack of knowledge. Pray for wisdom, saints of God. We must be wise in these times we live in. We must be filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. We must prepare our lives and remain ready, waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to fulfill His promise. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14 verses 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I will prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that you may be where I am. It is good news that God will put an end to this wickedness and restore us to our heavenly homes. However, until that day comes, the Lord has provided us with warning signs that the time is near. He has given us clear signs that we should know that the end is near. The Bible tells us that people will arise claiming to be the Christ or the Messiah, but it warns us not to listen to them. So instead of looking at everything that is happening in the world and focusing your time and energy on a checklist of all the signs of the times, 
I encourage you to focus your time and energy on seeking God. This should be our only focus, to know Jesus Christ, to pray, and to know Him more. The Bible is calling us to wake up. The Lord wants us to wake up to the fact that there is a heaven and a hell. There is a day of judgment. I don't know about you, but heaven, from what I've read, seems to be the better place. No more tears, no more sadness, just joy, just peace. Oh, to be in the presence of the Lord for all eternity, to be far from the illnesses and natural disasters of this world. Focusing on knowing Jesus Christ more deeply is a central biblical calling. The Bible repeatedly encourages us to pursue an intimate relationship with God. In John 17, verse 3, Jesus defines eternal life as knowing God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. This knowledge is not merely intellectual, but a living and transformative relationship. Praying and knowing God more intimately is an ongoing journey. In Philippians 3, verses 10, 11, Paul expresses his deep desire to know Christ, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings through prayer, meditation on the scriptures, and fellowship with other believers. We grow in our understanding and love for God. The warning to awaken to the reality of heaven and hell is equally emphasized in the Bible. In Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus talks about the narrow way that leads to life and the broad way that leads to destruction. This is a reminder that the choices we make have eternal implications. The promise of heaven as described in Revelation 21 verses 4 to 5 is a place where there are no more tears, pain, or death. Everything is made new. This hope is an incredible comfort and a reminder of God's faithfulness. To be in the presence of God for all eternity free from illness, natural disasters, and sorrow, is a wonderful prospect and a goal to look forward to. Therefore, as followers of Christ, we are called to prioritize our relationship with Him, aware of eternal realities. This means living in a way that honors God, loving others as Jesus loved us, and always being prepared for the day when we meet Him face to face. This focus on Jesus and eternity not only gives purpose and direction to our lives, but also strengthens use to face everyday challenges with faith and hope. I encourage you to focus your time on having a right relationship with Jesus Christ, so that when we stand before Him, we hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Remember that in our journey as followers of Christ, it is essential to maintain faith and dedication. We face many challenges and temptations, but with Jesus by our side, we have the strength and wisdom to overcome them. Our focus must remain firm on our faith and God's love, which guides use through all adversity. So as we navigate through life, let us remember to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the source of our strength, our hope, and our salvation. By keeping our eyes fixed on Him, we can traverse the rough seas of this world with confidence and peace. In short, the call of Revelation 12, verse 12, is a powerful reminder of the spiritual reality we face and the active role of evil in the world. But more importantly, it is a call to spiritual awakening, vigilance, and dedication to Christ. It is an invitation to delve deeper into our relationship with Jesus, seeking His presence and guidance in all aspects of our lives. This is a time for us to be bright lights in an often dark world, reflecting the love and truth of Christ wherever we are. As we approach the end times, may we be found faithful, strong in faith, and diligently working in the Lord's vineyard, ready for the day when He returns.